Kerry promised the U.S. is taking action. Uh, we are deeply concerned about what is happening in Iraq, and we are not concerned and waiting. But the assurances from the White House are not enough for Republicans. But it's not like we haven't seen over the last five or six months uh, these terrorists moving in, taking control of western Iraq. Uh, now they've taken control of Mosul. They're 100 miles from Baghdad. And what's the president doing? Taking a nap. Eleven years after President Bush took the nation to war in Iraq, the chaos in that country and the region that many warned of now seems all too real. Joining me now, MS NBC News foreign correspondent Ayman Mohaldin. And Ayman, can you tell us who ISIS is and how they have become so apparently fearsome and strong over the last several months? Sure. I mean, certainly uh, ISIS is a group that was, as you mentioned in that report, founded uh, late last year after they broke away from Al-Qaeda. Now, there are several components to the group itself. One of its largest components uh, have been former Iraqi army members, soldiers, uh, members of the Sunni Arab community inside Iraq itself. They have been able, over the course of the last year or so, grown their ranks, grown their numbers by tapping into uh, social resentment in the Sunni Arab communities of the western part of the country, and that has allowed them to grow. Uh, but they now also have, in addition to that, foreign fighters that have come in by the hundreds and have joined the ranks. We've seen uh, documentations as well as heard from fighters that have come from Europe, uh, including places like Chechnya, Central Asia, as well as North Africa. So they also have that, but their numbers are predominantly made up of the Sunni Arab community uh, that inhabits both the western part of Iraq as well as uh, the Syrian population population, the Sunni Arab Syrian population. So, so, so those are the ones that really make the, fang, the rank and file of ISIS. So what is next here? They now control Mosul, they control Tikrit, um, they are marching towards Baghdad. I guess the first question is, are they capable of taking Baghdad? Well, the short answer to that really is no. To take control of Baghdad would be extremely difficult. They don't have the numbers. Keep in mind, ISIS is about 3,000 to about 5,000, maybe as many as 8,000. To really try to take a city in the millions and to control it would be very difficult, given the fact that it is the central power of not only the Iraqi government, but also some of the more dominant Shia militias who really want to confront ISIS. Now, what is ISIS capable of doing in the coming months? They can certainly hold on to some of the territory they have because they do have a groundswell of support among those populations, but they could certainly drag Iraq into a full-blown confrontation in sectarian warfare. We're not there just yet. This is still a bit of a political crisis, but ISIS wants to confront the Shia population of Iraq in a full-on battle so that it can then turn around and recruit more Sunni Arabs across the Arab world. This is something that they've been propagating for the last several years, uh, and they now want to fulfill that fight uh, and try to pitch this fight as a fight between Shias in Iraq and Iraq and Iran, as well as the Sunni Arabs uh, across the region. It's been their MO for the past several months. And it seems the Maliki government, in being as uh, harsh and brutal as they have been towards uh, Sunni populations and Sunni dissidents, and even peaceful Sunni protests, have played into ISIS's hands. Can the Maliki government do anything militarily here without further alienating precisely those parts of the population they need to bring back into the fold to build some kind of unified state? Well, militarily, the one thing they can do is try to mitigate some of these arms that are falling into the hands of ISIS. We've already seen the Iraqi Air Force today try and carry out airstrikes on some of the American-built air bases that the Iraqi army took over after the Americans withdrew, and they've tried to destroy some of the aircraft, some of the Humvees, some of the heavy weapons that are now falling into the hands of ISIS. But in terms of engaging in a full-on battle, it certainly does not favor the Iraqi army for two reasons. One, they would have to fight an urban warfare where, again, uh, it's not something they are very well trained in, and more importantly, if they are going to deploy troops from Baghdad, from the central government, to confront the Sunni Arab populations, they would be fighting against a groundwell support of the population, and the population there right now is very disengaged with the Shia-led government in Baghdad. I would urge the administration to get all of our people out now. I think the people in uh, the ISIS have as part of their agenda to attack our homeland. The next 9-11 is in the making. Joining me now is Zainab Al-Sawaj, co-founder and executive director of the American Islamic Congress. She was born in Iraq, fled the country in 1991, just returned from a visit to Iraq three weeks ago. Zainab, when you hear an American politician calling for airstrikes in Iraq, what is your reaction? Um, it's not, certainly is not uh, um, 
uh, happy uh, news to hear, but uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, the situation in Iraq is uh, in the past uh, week or so. It's been um, it's been not really encouraging to see what's uh, what's going on in there and how the insurgents and these jihadists took uh, uh, over Mosul and uh, to create in other parts of the of the country. Um, uh, if you, if you let, me, let me ask you this: How how, how did we get here? I mean, from your perspective, the, the disintegration that has led to this point. When I, you, I, yeah, please. I, th I think the um, uh, the situation the situation is with the with the government the weak uh, how the government was weak not being able to um, uh, include all everyone uh, under the umbrella even though the Sunni population in uh, in Iraq they voted they had seats in the parliament I mean the head of the parliament is, is a Sunni Arab from from Mosul and uh, but there are a lot of uh, negotiations and there are a lot of uh, uh, problems also and these kind of problems led to the situation where we are right now where the al-qaeda and uh, these jihadists took advantage of and uh, empower, um, and came to um, to Iraq to uh, fight that what they call it a, a war or a jihad against uh, the Shiites and they made it they portray it as a fight Sunni Shia fights ha having been there recently how intense is the feeling of sectarian division in the country right now between the Sunni minority and the Shia majority. Um, it depends where you are uh, in the country. In most, um, in the urban cities, you don't hear much about it. But mm. in the in certain areas, um, that's been tense or been neglected. You hear a lot about about that. Um, also, uh, in which group you belong to, if you are if you belong to a certain uh, political uh, um, group or a certain uh, political party, uh, then you certainly align. Uh, people align themselves with these political parties. Um, uh, that's always sectarian or depends on what uh, which sect that they are from um, on a daily basis you see life is normal but you see a lot of also suffering depends which area you are in whether you are Sunni or Shiites do you j just to be clear the origin of the group that is now terrorizing much of Iraq uh, ISIS they were formed in the cauldron of violence and chaos that was the American occupation in the country I mean they did not exist before the American invasion and occupation happened well, they, they they used to have roots uh, in Iraq, and uh, but uh, after the uh, uh, the fall of Saddam's regime, um, things their tax have have changed. Before, when Saddam was in power, they came to certain parts of Iraq and tried to spread their ideologies in in terms of how they control women and how to cover them and men as well uh, with their uh, Salafi jihadist um, uh, ideology. Uh, but Saddam's power was much more. Uh, uh, strong and they could control them at that time. Hmm. After the fall of Saddam's regime, they formed a form, uh, especially they are uh, when the government become mainly Shiite, um, so these kind of uh, um, their acts become more as a holy war or a jihad against the Shiites because uh, they do not align with the same ideology that they have. Now, in recent uh, uh, months or in, couple, in the past couple of years, they get more stronger in in, uh, in fighting in Syria. Part yes, because and, the Syrian uh, the, the Syrian uh, uh, jihad there has has so exploded across the border between Iraq and Syria. Exactly. And this it. Iraq, Iraq was a, a, took a part, part of it and uh, the Iraqi uh, government sent uh, uh, people to fight there. So it's uh, it's become more uh, a cl clear uh, picture for people that they, they want to, to, get, to get back. Uh, I think with the, with the uh, resistance that happening in Ramadi and Fallujah uh, in the past, since past last year until now that also took place and the failure of the Iraqi government in terms of um, overcoming that and um, uh, led into what, what we have right now.